Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm taking more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. Recently, we celebrated what would have been Earl Hamner's 100th birthday. Uh, there was a tribute in Nelson County where a full-size, more than life-size statue uh, was uh, unveiled of Earl Hamner sitting on a bench with his writing paper and, and whatnot. So Cammie Kotler went and represented all of us and uh, the uh, all of the, the siblings, the children, got together and shot uh, video just with a, tri a tribute to Earl and our some of our favorite memories of him. So she went and uh, represented us and shared that video. And I understand it was a lovely ceremony. So uh, I thought that I would take this question then from For the Hall of It, who said, I'm wondering if there was one thing you could ask Earl Hamner Jr., what would it be? And I think that uh, from all the questions and as I've been looking back, one of the main things that would have been interesting to me is to know the stories, how much was true, what was based on fact, and what was just pure fiction. Every once in a while, Earl would share something, uh, for instance, that the Baldwin sisters were based on a mother and daughter that he knew from his youth. So there were things that were based on, on fact, uh, but I wouldn't say 100%. Even the homecoming wasn't necessarily something where that happened one winter. Uh, not those particular events. So I think he would draw from actual things from his youth, obviously, but then he would embellish and some stories were just out and out fiction. Uh, so I think it would have been fun to know what was real and what wasn't. Continuing on the theme of Earl, uh, this is from Nancy Barta. I watched a movie starring Henry Fonda this weekend called Spencer's Mountain. The main character was Clayboy that wanted to be a writer and his mother, Livy, and father, John. The father was building a new home for his wife on top of the mountain. Lots of sisters and brothers and grandma and grandpa. The movie was made in the 40s. I always thought The Waltons was a true story and not made up. I guess it was a remake. Um, Spencer's Mountain was based on a book that Earl Hamner wrote and it was about his youth. So it wasn't so much that The Homecoming was a remake as that Earl decided to create another story about his family. Uh, so again, what exactly was true about Spencer's Mountain? I don't know. Spencer had been a name in the family, so that's where that name came from. And when we originally auditioned for The Homecoming, that original script the names of the characters were the same as in Spencer's Mountain. So John Boy was Clayboy. Uh, and the character of Mary Ellen was um, Becky. Uh, so when we did the homecoming, uh, I think because the rights to Spencer's Mountain and those names were already licensed because of that movie, they had to change the names. So Walton was another name from someplace in Earl's you know, family tree, and then they created all of the new names. Uh, I always thought one of the fun ones in the in Spencer's Mountain uh, was that uh, Elizabeth was called Patty Cake, so I think that would have been fun uh, when she was little. I don't know how cute it would have been, but I guess we could have called her Patty later. Um, so that's what I know about the connection between the homecoming, the Waltons, and Spencer's Mountain. A question here from KB6115. Judy, you mentioned briefly a while back about rehearsals. Would you help us understand how rehearsal time was blocked into any given day, in addition to going to school and actually filming the scenes during the six and a half day set for each episode? Um, yeah, um, the way a day would break down is there was no specific rehearsal period. It wasn't like with some shows or even in the homecoming where we had we had a little bit of rehearsal where we rehearsed some scenes when the camera wasn't around. We just did some rehearsal. Uh, typically with things I've done because the shooting schedule is fast and on the Waltons is whatever degree of rehearsal is going to happen happens right before we shoot the scene. So we're called into the kitchen uh, there's going to be a scene around the kitchen table. They put us all where they want us. 
and we basically combination of with the director saying I want you to I want this movement happening and then if there's things that uh, we're being given some free reign to determine but mostly it's the director going I want you you and Aaron over at the cutting board and I want grandma at the sink um, and I want Olivia at the stove and I want the rest of the kids coming in and taking their seats at the table so we'd be given that basic blocking and then we would talk through the scene. Sometimes we might not even play the whole scene. It was more to stage it. And then maybe we might have a rehearsal for camera before we shot. But it was really up to us as characters to just do our homework and be ready to go in and shoot right away. Um, sometimes if it was uh, a more involved thing, we might rehearse it a number of times, but it was really more for the staging than so much for the performances. That was, the performances were more up to us. Now, after a take, if the director wanted something else, then he might come in and ask us to do it. Or if something wasn't quite as strong as they wanted or just didn't work, we might do it again. But most of the time, if we did retakes, it was more about the camera. The camera didn't have a clean shot or something was out of focus than it was about performances because that was just kind of our job um, to do it. And they just didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of takes to tweak the performances. So that was, yeah, that was on the actors to do that homework. Um, for us then with going to school, uh, we would, whenever we weren't actually filming, the, those of us in school would go back to the schoolroom on the set and get as much time as we could until we were called back in. So they might come in and do that initial blocking rehearsal and then send us, if we weren't already in hair and makeup and wardrobe, we'd be sent to do that right away. If we were already dressed and ready, which usually first thing in the morning you came in, you were sent to hair and makeup and wardrobe. So you were already in hair, makeup and wardrobe right away, unless it was the first scene of the day where they might wanna get a rehearsal before they sent us or midway while people were getting ready so that then they could be setting lights. Um, but then while lighting and everything was happening, we children would go to school. And uh, then when they were ready to shoot, they'd come and they'd get us and we'd go in and we'd film. And we'd do, and whenever they thought they might have a long enough break to send us for 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, they would send us. Otherwise we'd stay until that scene was finished and then rehearse block the next one and then go back to school. So we just worked it out during the course of the day. And then if we weren't in a scene, we'd just be in school. So it kind of just rotated like that during the course of the day. This question is from Jack Kirby Fan. Uh, so I was noticing the opening scene. Um, this would have been in the episode Spring Fever. Uh, it looks like the fence was rigged to break because a fence in real life would not so easily break off like that. But to do something like that would require accuracy since you, if you hit it too hard, the fence crashes to the ground and vice versa. Do you have any thought or insight you can add? Um, so I wasn't there when it was filmed, but I think you are correct that they would have somehow had that fence ready to go down. So then when uh, Mary Jackson sort of came in, she wouldn't have had to hit it very hard. And there was could very well have been somebody um, off camera that you couldn't see who was giving her hand signals for how much or whatever. Um, and it was probably, yes, just set to break away easily that she just kind of had to tap it. Um, that would be my best guess on that one. Um, because you did actually see her come in and I believe you could see that it was actually her driving at that point. All right, then uh, another question. Um, in some of the behind the scenes where when setting up a camera, operators use tape measures and so on. Um, I can take guesses, but I'm curious as to the details on that. Um, the, the tape measure had to do with focus. So how far, so they would take it basically so it was from the camera lens to what would have been the the center, like if you're, you know, if you're taking a picture and there is, you're, you're framing up where you want the main focus to be. So, so they would take that tape measure and they would take it to, you know, your face. So they knew the distance from the camera to the point of focus. And that would tell them where the focus setting should be because all that focus, all those focus settings were done by hand. So there was the camera operator who was looking through the camera and with two 
handles was keeping everything in frame. And then you had the person who was basically the focus puller, which is the um, first camera assistant. And so that person would be making the focus adjustments, which were on the side of the camera. So he'd know the starting position and then if the camera, the actor moved. And so they would measure each time uh, a person moved, every time the focus would have to shift. So if I'm at the table and I get up and I go to the, um, to the sink and the camera moved with me, then that focus would shift along the way. And so they would have measured me at the table and then they would have measured me at the sink so that then as I made that move, he would adjust that focus so that by the time I got to the sink, I was still in focus. So that's what the, um, the tape measure is about. And this question is from Lisa Lisa 2023. Hi, Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> uh, you had a couple questions. One I had already answered for you. And the other one is very interested to know what inspired you to create this one of a kind show, my here behind the scenes thing. Um, never seen anyone anywhere else. Uh, so thank you. I'm glad you're really enjoying this. Uh, this was sort of uh, an idea during COVID um, where things I was doing that were put on hold or canceled indefinitely or canceled permanently, uh, you know, I had a lot of free time just like everybody else. So I wanted to find ways to be creative and to interact with people. And it was actually, it, I was inspired by Cami because Cami had done several segments of talking about the very first episode that was filmed or that aired, The Foundling. And I thought how fascinating that she was just talking about what went on behind the scenes. And I had been doing, uh, just doing some webinars and things about marketing and, and, and stuff like that. And, and so I, one of the things I had heard was that YouTube channels can be very effective in 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 PR and marketing and stuff. So I thought, well, oh, that's interesting. And what would I do? I don't know. Uh, but then I thought, well, I could do something like that and use that to sort of experiment and put a toe into the market of YouTube and, and understand more about it. So I, that's how I sort of got that idea as a thing to start and knew how fabulous our viewers and loyal fans are and thought, well, this is an opportunity for me to answer a lot of the sorts of questions I had heard over the years and just share things that weren't known. So it kind of started in that way. And then as I saw how much people were enjoying it and the questions that were being asked, it just sort of grew from there as I tried to find what things might be interesting uh, to you. And of course, every segment isn't interesting to everybody. And sometimes people say, I like it better when you do this than this. And, you know, so I do what I can and, and I know you enjoy the guests, but they're not always easy to schedule or find or any of that. So I try to balance it up and hopefully uh, create interesting things uh, that give a little something for everyone. So thank you everyone who has been continuing to watch and support the channel for about almost three years now, I think, something like that. So thank you. That's what I have for you for this segment of Ask Judy. Thank you for putting your questions in the comments, which is where I pull them from. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.